up, y'all? It's Poppin' Scar from Steve. About to react to this lovely TTV vid. It's titled Cat Clowns Diddy. And buyer looking to sell Diddy's secret tapes. Ooh, they're coming. They're coming. And Hurricane Helene, Longshoreman Strike. Okay. Yeah, I saw some clips um, of this hurricane. Prayers to everybody, you know, out in the South. I, I know that hurricanes can be a very serious situation. Some people even lose their lives. So, you know, prayers to everyone. But yeah, let's see what's going on in this video. Let's watch. Hey, tea sippers Happy Monday. Hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and do some updates on the Diddy situation. So if you guys do not know, Cat Williams went viral once again this weekend because folks were secretly recording his comedy show. And during his comedy show, he was basically talking about Diddy's lawyer, how he's a trash lawyer. Like I've been saying, this guy had to come from Timu because it seems like the lawyer is out here wanting attention and he keeps trying to spin this baby oil story almost as a way for him to garner attention. Mm. Here goes some videos. I can't imagine it's thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. I don't know where the number of thousand came. Baby oil, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. He has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Diddy's case causing online chatter over the shocking discovery. The rapper's attorney telling all to TMZ as the outlet dives deep into the ongoing trial in their documentary, The Downfall of Diddy, The Indictment, streaming. Toby! Oh, y'all lost me. Weekend. I ain't watching that. For an orgy. I guess. I, I don't know what you need a thousand. I, one bottle of baby oil goes a long way. I don't know what you need, need a thousand for. Yeah, it's the number of bottles going viral on social media, with Diddy's longtime nemesis, 50 Cent, dropping this meme on X. <laughs> Diddy Meanwhile, <laughs> Diddy's defense team offers this explanation. I mean, he has a big house. He buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. I mean, have you sat in the, in the parking lot of a Costco and see what people walk out of there with? TMZ reached out to Costco. Their rep says none of their U.S. locations carry baby. I was thinking he that. He's innocent. <laughs> I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case. I'm like, I ain't never seen people buy baby oil in bulk. We're not giving up by a long shot. I told Mr. Combs, um, I'm going to try and get his case and to trial. And they said they like Kirkland Do they got Kirkland? Let's just say it's all. Okay. How do you explain the baby oil and the lubricants? A thousand bottles of baby oil. Uh, I don't think there's a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. You know, I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. Um, and, you know, this is this is consensual adults doing what consensual adults do. You know, we, we can't get so puritanical in this country to think that somehow sex is a bad thing because... Isn't this it sex wasn't, trafficking? You know, All right, so you guys just saw the lawyer it's talking about sex. it. So much so that Costco had to later on come out and say that they don't even sell baby oil at Costco. Mm. Now Costco is addressing Agnavilo's claim, Listen, keep telling that TMZ that none of the company's U.S. locations carry baby oil. Well, Cat Williams is definitely joking about the situation and going in on Diddy, going in on his lawyer, and going in on the baby oil. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. We caught him on the baby oil. Though. His voice, his voice makes everything he said like it makes it a thousand times funnier. It's not even about what he's saying; it's how he's saying it. Delivery matters so much with comedy. But what he said, audio is tape. to show how these products that we use how it penetrates our bodies and gets into our system that's wild the fact that you can put something on and they got drugs in it and now you high it's like what the hell you 
think your skin is a protective barrier? Not really. All right, so you guys just saw what Cat Williams had to say. Now, what's very interesting is that Cat Williams made reference to drugs being put in the baby oil. And a lot of people are thinking that, you know, Cat Williams knows something that oh, we all don't, don't know. know. He don't. But people have been running this um, conspiracy stop. on TikTok now for about a week. I know a lot of people have been asking me, is it really baby oil? It could be GHB. And what's interesting with that conspiracy is that a lot of people on TikTok were saying this before Cat Williams ever said this. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys some of these videos of yeah, people that thinking well, that... That's really GHB instead of baby oil, just because of the large quantity of oil. So I want you guys to go ahead and check that out. Mm. And y'all may have already seen it, but I had to bring it to my people. Pope Daddy did not have just a thousand bottles of baby oil. The baby oil was laced Wait, what is with GHB, a liquid ecstasy, oh. performance drug, stamina, all that. And what they would do, I guess, was splatter the baby oil on you. I don't know how. To... It's not baby oil. It's GHB. Who has a thousand bottles of baby oil? If baby oil was such a big part of all these parties and all the things that Diddy did to his victims, some celebrities would have made a joke about it here and there. We would have heard about it. Especially Chrissy Teigen couldn't be paid to shut her mouth. That bitch would have cracked a joke about it for sure. I just watched this man's TikTok about how it's not a baby oil. It has to be laced with drugs. So as I'm reading the comments, someone said, that's why Jaguar Wright said in one of her interviews at the end, she said, blink twice. Blink twice was a movie with Channing Tatum. He would spray perfume onto women who would make them forget everything. So then somebody else in the comments said, yeah, and GHB is slippery. So I look up, the, what is it called on the street? Look at the last one, liquid ecstasy. Side effects that include seizures and comas. Oh, it was taken off the shelves or something in like the 60s. What is GHB used for in bodybuilding? Performance enhancement additive. What are the positive side effects of GHB? Feelings of euphoria. What is GHB for parents? Usually available as a clear liquid. It's not baby oil. It just makes sense because why would the feds confiscate fucking baby oil and how do you get so many people to comply besides money you drug them Insane saying that of course the the baby oil was j ghp nobody needs that much baby oil who needs that much baby oil like how much thousands of bottles it was obvious to me i mean i was going to say that before and that made sense to me the drugs everything is about who's on bella mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen her before, but I don't know. Nobody needs that much baby oil. And who uses baby oil. oil? They have to look... Coconut oil is better than baby oil. Baby oil is just going to, like... No. Anyway, I mean, you can tan in baby much. oil, but that gave everyone <laughs> cancer. All right, so you guys just saw what folks on TikTok were saying. So this entire situation is crazy. But Cat Williams is right. You know, something's not clean with this whole situation. And his attorney definitely feels like he's here for attention and not really to get Diddy off of anything. Mm -hmm. Now, in other Diddy news, mm -hmm. what else is going on is we all know that these Diddy freak tapes, people Diddy have been segment. talking about this. And, you know, uh, recently a male sex worker gave one of them freak off tapes to the feds. Well, now a woman named Ariel Mitchell Kidd, she's representing a woman who claims that Diddy art her in 2018. And so she went on to News Nation's show this past Friday to discuss what the woman endured. And also there's a potential sale of the sex tape. So they've been saying that these tapes have been leaking and being shopped around Hollywood. And I remember Jaguar Wright saying something like this a few weeks ago and people thought she was crazy. She was saying that a lot of these tapes were ending up on the dark web. And remember the guy, Joe, who was also accused of arming that other lady that came out with Gloria Allred, he ran a whole porn company. He filmed porn, he distributed porn. So this might be why Diddy had Joe on the payroll. Mm -hmm. Not only to be his little side rapist, but to also film this and produce it. Because we know a lot of things end up on the dark web, everything from snuff to child porn, you know, all types of just deviant, demonic stuff. So I would not be surprised at all if this tape is being shopped around. So I want you guys to What's go ahead and watch this interview I feel like right I've heard here. that before. I also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to essentially represent them in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. 
So, um, which I declined that because. Uh, Wait a minute. Say that again. Say that again. Back up. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, there have been people already shopping. We've heard about the tapes. Yes. Right? The, the shopping thing is. Yes, there already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Uh, I've heard this before, so like a catch and kill. Catch and kill, correct. Wow, can you, and I guess you can't reveal the person who is on No, I can't explain who the person was, but Mr. High profile? Combs, Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is, I would venture to say, more high profile than Mr. Combs. Really? Really? And you've seen it? Or I've seen stills of the video. Okay. Um, I, so you can well, verify well, yeah, I, I, that it exists, that it's real, that the other person in the video is very visible. It's no question it's if it's that person in the video and i can tell the video was pornographic in nature oh my all right so we know that he videotaped a lot of activities at his home did he um and it sounds like there was probably a lot of hidden cameras as well is that what is being talked about yes um this was actually in his atlanta home at okay. the home he had in atlanta at one point and um it does seem that it's the person isn't like looking into the video of course he would want a house in atlanta video so it's to me, it doesn't seem like that person knows they're being videotaped. It doesn't seem like they're active participant in the videotaping, like they're being surreptitiously recorded. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, the police report we talked about, but when your client came out, uh, obviously the neighbor knew. Did she talk to her family? Did she talk to her friends? Did she have another lawyer? Let's go back to your client. So at the time, she, as most rape victims are, they feel a lot of shame. Absolutely. And they, they don't want to vocalize what happened to them because then it makes it real so they kind of just kind of internalize it and get over it mm -hmm. and due to the high profile nature that it was mr combs who did this she was afraid for her life she was concerned that if she was to come forward and say something that no one would believe her because we're talking about 2018 when mr combs was still pretty much at the height of his career still very much so a icon and influential figure mm -hmm. so she's just a young girl from Northern California who's going to believe that he right. had done something to her like this. So she didn't tell anybody. She did not hire an attorney. All she did was make the police report in the hopes that maybe the police would try to investigate and come up with anything. But she said she kind of felt from the police that they were disregarding what she was saying, even without saying Mr. Holmes' name. So she didn't feel any confidence that revealing his name would have done anything. Sure, sure. I mean, but there's a police report. Yeah. I mean, that fact in of itself is a big deal because when you're talking about going back in time. I, I want to wrap it up. Been not too long ago, and she was looking extremely uncomfortable. A lot of these celebs are looking very uncomfortable. Um, looks like they have a lot on their mind ever since Diddy Dunn got popped, okay? <laughs> Mary, right here, please. Come here, come here. Come right. Mary, straight ahead. Mary, right here. One more. And the five. So now in other news, last but certainly not least, um, I want to go ahead and just, you know, once again, send my thoughts and prayers to everybody being affected by Hurricane Helene. Florida, right? um, this situation oh, has Helene? just kept me up thought... at night just because, again, I have a lot of ties to the Carolinas. Um, I lived there for 10 years. My youngest son was born in North Carolina. Oh. So to see places like Asheville um, and so many places just destroyed, it's heartbreaking. And not just in the Carolinas, but parts of Georgia, Tennessee. This is a natural disaster of epic proportions. And it's very, people are saying that it's even worse than Katrina at this point. This morning, scenes of devastation across the southeast. From Florida to the Carolinas, Helene decimating towns and communities. It's death toll still rising. In Asheville, North Carolina, an unfolding catastrophe. Homes and buildings swept away by raging floodwaters that have submerged the town. It's beyond anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. A similar scene in the town of Chimney Rock, virtually wiped off the map by floodwaters. Chimney Rock Town. Meanwhile, the heavy rains triggering a massive mudslide that washed out this stretch of I-40, a major highway connecting western and eastern parts of the state. Helene's flooding rains bringing devastation to Tennessee as well. And Irwin, the scene of this dramatic rescue. Further south in Florida, entire neighborhoods ripped to shreds. Homes decimated, boats thrown into parking lots. We're very fortunate. We're very fortunate that we're alive. Helene is the third hurricane to slam into Florida's Big Bend in just 13 months. Entire houses are missing or flatten in on themselves. This recovery will be measured in years and years, not months. A storm surge of record levels flooded the barrier islands just off of Florida's coast in the Gulf of Mexico. I have a, a wife of uh, 48 years that, uh, that I've left on the island and by herself, and uh, she's pretty frustrated and stressed out. Near St. Petersburg, crews are working through mounds of sand several feet tall, searching for whatever and whoever they can find. 
We have active search and rescue out there going through every single structure, making sure if there's anybody in there that still um, could be rescued. And really this hotel here in downtown is one of the few places in all of Asheville that has Wi-Fi. And people here, as you can see, are gathering morning, noon, and night for a chance at some cell. Um, a lot of my tea sippers that have been in contact with me on Discord, on Instagram, in the YouTube comment section, because we were posting stuff over the weekend, keeping people um, abreast of what was going on in the Southeast. And there's a lot of people stranded right now. They're stuck in their homes. Um, they're running out of water. A lot of people without power. So it's very, very serious. And let's stop with the accusations. Let's stop judging people and saying, why didn't they leave? First of all, these are not coastal towns that are affected. A lot of these people are in mountain regions, the Appalachias. They did not get a warning to leave. They were not told to evacuate. Nobody thought this storm would come that far inland. This is a storm that was massive and nobody was prepared for it. They thought it was going to be more or less in Florida around the bend, and it ended up spreading across several states. So like East Tennessee, Pigeon Ford, Dollywood, Gatlinburg, they're very much affected. And you guys know my event is this weekend, so it's just very stressful because I know a lot of people, you know, are coming to the event from the southeast. So just, you know, be careful, um, stay prepared. There's more to come. I also want to warn you guys that right now um, the supply chain is once again being affected. Um, supposedly the shippers and the railroad people, um, they're supposed to be going on strike. They're supposed to be going on strike today. Just hours from now, a potential major strike sparking fears that parts of the U.S. economy could come to a standstill. Thousands of dock workers threatening to walk off the job from Boston and New York all the way down to New Orleans and Houston. The International Longshoremen's Association represents 85,000 workers in these critical port cities. A strike could cost up to $4.5 billion per day. Oh, These ports carry everything from canned goods to car parts to electronics. And a walkout would force major stores, including Walmart, Home Depot, and Ikea, to find other ways to get their products into the U.S. The workers are at an impasse tonight over a new six-year contract, demanding higher wages and more protections against automation. In recent weeks, the union boss defiant. I'll shut them down throughout the world to prove that we can beat them. The alliance pushing back blasting what they call the union's repeated refusal to come to the table and bargain. Are you worried this could crush the supply chain ahead of the holiday shopping season? The longer a strike goes, the longer it's going to take to recover, the more of a potential impact it has. President Biden has the power to break a strike, but the White House says he is not considering it. Why not? Because there's collective bargaining. Stop. Right here. Stop right here, y'all. Do not go into these people's store and buy a bottle of toilet paper. Y'all, if these union workers go on strike, toilet paper will be at the least of our worries. Let's talk about it, y'all. The strike that's going on with these union workers. Um, they want to raise, y'all. We all deserve a raise with everything going up. These people want to raise. They're set to go on strike October 1st if they can't come to some type of mutual agreement about getting them a raise, y'all. What this means for us, it will impact our gas prices first. So we can't get no gas over here. It's going to become high demand. So guess what? They're going to make us pay more for it. It's going to affect our food. It's going to affect um, toiletries, fruit, all this uh, stuff that comes over that body out. It's going to affect all of these things for us. So we all need to be praying right now at this current moment that they're able to come to some type of mutual agreement because we can't afford for gas to go up any higher. We can't afford for food to go up any higher. We all are struggling right now in this economy. Imagine it going up even higher. Furthermore, if it takes them longer to come to an agreement, like months go by, y'all, that means fuel. We won't have no more fuel. So how are our truck drivers going to come to be able to deliver you know, our food and other products to these grocery stores? If the truck drivers can't get gas, then y'all know we during show ain't gonna be able to get no gas. So that means we all stuck at the house, you know, can't move around. We can't get no food. We can't get nothing. So let's just pray against all of that for the United States, y'all, and that we able to come to some type of mutual agreement so these people don't even go on the strike so we can continue to get our goods at a, I ain't gonna say a, a decent price, but a price that, price that we can actually be able to get something to eat, y'all, be able to travel, to go to work and everything else, y'all. So pray us, you know, pray us that everything goes good and we have it to Tuesday, which is October 1st for them to, um, to some type of agreement. Furthermore, let me say this. If I can come on here and bring y'all entertainment talking about Cardi B and P.D. and all that, I can also give y'all the real of what's going on in the world, too. So, that's it. Bye, y'all. Speak on it. What's going on, everybody? This is CDL Shorty A. Why isn't nobody talking about the ports, man? October 1st, you know that um, we're going to have a big strike on the ports. So these right here, I'm down here at the ports. These right here are huge cranes that they use to take containers off of ships like this. Now, this ship right here, it's got cars on it. But guess what? If the ILA and if the Marine Time cannot come to an agreement by September 30th, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be a huge strike on the ports, all East Coast ports. And there's whispers of West Coast ports being shut down too, guys. So what do you think that's going to do for the trucking community? All that freight is going to be backed up in the water, and it's going to be backed up here on the ports because of labor, labor laws. You know, they want what they deserve. So 
we as truckers need to stick together and we need we can come together and have a strike too to get what we deserve why are brokers out here taking 40 percent off loads why is shippers out here pinning uh, uh carriers against each other huh we need to do better guys we need to do better all right so i'm just letting you guys know october 1st it's going to be a huge strike at the ports i'm down here at the port of jacksonville florida all right so what do you think that's going to do for not only the trucking community but the everyday community think about it Honestly, getting pretty worried about the upcoming port strike. I'm reading on the news, they're saying on Fox News, the port uh, they think already has shut down. They're showing the trucks lining up, trying to get in to kind of like scavenge, you know, to get stuff out that they can get out. And it baffles me. You know, I live in Miami and South Florida here. No one really seems to know anything that's going on here. People are oblivious here. They're only interested in clubbing and stuff. In a few days, they'll get it when they go to the grocery store and they realize that, you know, things are missing off the shelf and things like that. But this has a ripple effect. It affects, it affects the truckers. They don't get paid. And the inflation is out of control already. It's like, but no, no, the, the idiots are voting for Harris because she's a woman and that apparently makes her qualified. It's like, I'm a woman. I should not be president, okay? But, you know, can't argue with an idiot. <laughs> Translation, it's starting to happen. Uh, the Miami port is shut down. See all those trucks, all the drivers have gone home, and there's no exit, no entrance to the port of Miami. It has started. They are going on strike, people. They need to pay them their money because they were going to be short on everything. People are going to run to the stores and look for toilet paper and uh, I mean, whatever comes from the other countries, which is pretty much everything. So just to let you know... The Miami port has started it. Later on, it'll be LA and it'll be New York. All the ports are supposed to be shutting down, so keep an eye out on the news. Can't believe it. I said it because I have to be said it. I always say the truth. Can't believe it. then a war is what they're going to get. I've been in longshoreman for over 23 years. And one thing I do know to be true, gas has went up. The cost of living has constantly went up. And, 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 and throughout these 23 years that I've been on the waterfront, we've only asked for $2, $3, or maybe $5 over the course of the contract. We've done our part. And we're, now we're asking, hey, you do your part. Because during the pandemic, we never stopped working. Imagine that a hospital is looking for a type of blood uh, to be shipped to it. And it's on, on the ship that I'm working on. But it's pouring down rain, lightning. We can't stop working. We got to get that, that box off so that that hospital can continue to drive and, and save the people's lives that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with it. And we, we just want to be respected for it. And, and, and I think it's high time that we demand it. And we, we, we're long overdue. Automation is serious. Yeah. Because when you bring new automation in to take away from our jobs, you don't, you don't make means for that person to have a job. They're, they're, they're pushed over to the side and they can't do that job that they've been accustomed to doing. What we're asking is allow our people to continue to work in this industry without going to get an extra job to make ends meet. Allow us to take care of our families like we've been doing with, with the wages that we currently have in place. Continue that trend. That's all we're asking for. And if we have to sit out two days, two weeks, two months, we're prepared to do that. So it is getting real, y'all. Like I said, I've been staying on top of all of this stuff. We've been speaking about it on Discord. I'm glad we do have a platform we can talk openly and freely and have these discussions, but it's getting real. Um, you know, definitely stock up on what you can. Wild. Really wild. Um, hopefully they pay these people. Give them their money. You know, very, very crazy situation. Um, I'm not going to stock up on anything. Um, I didn't do this when COVID happened either. I just go with the flow of life. <laughs> I, and, you know, having money doesn't even protect you from these type of things. Um, you know, if, if things are out of stock, it's like they're out of stock and they can't provide it for anybody. Um, so I, I don't have this um, laid back attitude because I'm like, oh, my money will help everything because it won't it, when shit really hits the fan. But I just don't like to panic or worry about things that I can't control. Um, I also don't keep uh, up to date with things like this. This is the first time I've heard of this. Um, I just don't typically watch the news because the news will scare you and, and make you worry. Um, so there's that. That's just how I handle things and that's how I stay at peace. You can handle things whatever, which way you like. If you want to stock up, and prepare then you know by all means uh do what you feel is best for you um but i'm just gonna you know hope for the best and and uh trust that everything will work out um but 
Yeah, crazy. I know about this. Um, cause yeah, it'll be October first when this video goes up. So apparently, this will be the first day of the strike. So yeah, we'll see what what takes place. Uh, as far as the Diddy situation, I feel like I'm over it. You know, <laughs> I mean, I really agreed to watch this vid when people requested it because I I did want to see what Cat said about Diddy specifically. But it's like if nothing huge comes out. I don't wanna, I don't wanna watch it or react to it. It's like we are diddied out at this point, you know. I do have one pre-recorded Diddy video though <laughs> that I might put out sometime this week. But other than that, I'm just like I'm diddied out. Okay, okay. He, he'll get what's coming to him, and everything will come to light. But as far as the tapes go, that's wild. If we end up seeing something, some get leaked on Twitter or something, that that'll be crazy. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think about all this. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!